Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one rinse at a time, back with his good friend, Mr. Dan Bird. How you doing, sir? I'm doing good. How you doing? I'm doing well, man. So one of the things I like that we do is we do come at this from an education perspective. Uh, right. You're helping me learn a new skill, basically remove emotion uh, from trading, which is clearly a weakness of mine. That's why I, I haven't touched stocks in a couple of decades. Uh, but something else we're going to do is just try to expand people's knowledge about what is possible. So today's uh, video number two is going to be about the basics of options. Is that right? Yes, uh, basics of uh, options, but it's it's the foundation leading to the next session, which is mm -hmm. really the most interesting one Absolutely. about, about uh, credit spreads, Folks, a way so, to generate income. Yep. So folks, what we're going to talk about here are <laughs> options. This is not uh, something that I am currently doing. It's not something I recommend most people do, but it is out there. You may hear these terms. So we thought we would to define them and talk about them. So where do you want to go first? I'm going to start with the basics, and uh, some of the folks on the on your channel may already know a lot about options, so this will Maybe. be a review for them. Mm -hmm. But for the ones that don't, I'm going to try to quickly give a primer on what options are. Okay. There is a lot to this topic. Yes. So uh, there's no way that I can cover the whole thing in the time that we have. Mm -hmm. So, but I need to set the baseline of what options are to get to the next session, which is credit spreads. Okay. To actually, to actually generate weekly income using credit spreads. Okay. And and even protect yourself, basically. So so what is an option? Stock option. It's uh, gives you the right, but not the obligation, to buy or sell a stock at an agreed agreed upon price. So in in other words, you, you're buying an option, buying the right to buy the stock later on mm -hmm. at a particular price that you set right now. And to have that ability, you pay what's called a premium. So you'll pay a certain amount for the option, which is usually a lot less than the price of the stock. For sure. But it gives you the ability to buy the stock later mm -hmm. if the price goes up. Mm -hmm. So puts are if you, if you think the stock's going down, calls are if you think the stock will go up. Mm -hmm. In the money means that the stock is already at the price that you expected. Mm -hmm or better. Mm -hmm. um, so the premium, which I talked about, is the price that you pay for the option. So think of it sort of like insurance, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. you, pay, you pay a premium for insurance, expecting that if your house burns down, the insurance company is going to rebuild your house or give you the money for it, right? Yep. Kind of the same idea. So you pay a premium, an insurance premium, with the expectation that the stock will go up and you can buy it later, but you buy it for that lower price that you're paying for now using the option. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's the basic idea of options. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna make this bigger so we can see the whole thing. All right. So an example using NVIDIA. Uh, trader stock is going to rise. You think it's gonna rise to 170. So you can buy a call option and the price of that option today is $16.10. Okay. So you buy 10 options, 10 contracts. One contract equals 100 shares. Mm -hmm. So it's basically 1,000 shares. You buy it for 16.10. So you pay $16,100. But if you wanted to buy 1,000 shares of NVIDIA outright, it was selling at $170. That's $170,000 you'd have to come up with. Yep. So now you can have the right to buy those shares with only 16,000. So it gives you leverage, gives the ability to potentially buy those shares at some point in the future, which is called the expiration date or any time before that, mm -hmm. but for much less money. So you don't have to put as much out, mm -hmm. all right? Now, additionally, you may want, you may, uh, if the trader wants to bet that Nvidia will fall, then you could do the same thing with puts. So you buy a put contract. Again, remember, it's an insurance policy. It's a premium. Mm -hmm. So you pay a premium price expecting that NVIDIA is going to fall. In this case, the puts, the $120 puts, because you think it's going to go from 170 to 120, right? It'll cost you $11.70 for that premium. Mm -hmm. Follow? Yep. So it will cost you $11,000 to buy puts on this rather than shorting it, which means you would have to have $120,000 in your account. 
Correct. In order to short it. Now, if it does go down to 120, you still haven't made money yet, right? Correct. Correct. Because your premium, the amount that you're you're out, the amount that you're paying for this right to short is 1170. So you need it to go to 109 or 108 mm -hmm. before you start making money. Yeah, 108.30. So mm -hmm. important to keep that in mind. Yep. So everything that I've talked about here so far is the typical way that most people think about options. Okay. Calls if you think it's going up, puts if you think it's going down. Mm -hmm. You pay a premium for the right to buy that. If it goes up, you can exercise it. And it's in this case, it's 170 plus 16 because mm -hmm. you paid 16 for it. So it needs to get to 186 mm -hmm. in order to break even. Mm -hmm. Or you can buy puts. Um, and the same way, if it's going to go down, you've got to wait for it to get to 109 to make money. That's gotcha. the way most people think about options. Mm -hmm. This is what the options chain typically looks like. So on the right hand side are the put prices, on the left hand side are the call prices. Mm -hmm. the, the parts in blue are in the money. Okay. Right. So mm -hmm. if it if it goes down, then the premium is lower. If it goes up, then the premium is lower on the call side. Got but it. that's the amount that you would pay for that particular option. Mm -hmm. Now, one thing that a lot of a lot of first time options players make the mistake of doing is they look for the cheapest one. Right. They look for the cheapest option. So if if uh, in this case Nvidia is selling for 148, 150 is basically at the money. Mm -hmm. So they might go down here and say, oh, well, this one this one's only nine dollars down here. So I think I'll buy that one, and expecting it to go to 195. If it goes to 200 dollars, I'm making a lot of money, and I didn't pay much for it. Mm -hmm. But the ability for it to make it to 195 is very low. Yeah. These are January options. So that's the mistake a lot of traders make. Mm -hmm. What you should do is buy in the money calls, even mm -hmm. though they cost more, maybe up here, and you can actually see here the, the number of calls that are already out. So most of the professional traders are buying right here at 2850, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Which is the 140 level, even though it's currently selling for close to 150. Mm -hmm. So they're buying a little bit in the money calls, they're more expensive, but there's more chance, there's more probability that it's actually going to make it to 140 plus 28 or 168.50 to break even. Got it. Right? Mm -hmm. So that's a big mistake that uh, novice options traders make is they look for the cheapest one, they buy that, and they're like, oh man, I, bet I bought these in really cheap and I'm going to make a ton of money. And then these expire worthless and they lose the whole 925. Yeah, puts and puts and call. Yeah, puts and calls were something. So I got really cocky in the early two thousands, made a bunch of money, and when I started losing and compounding, it's because I was doing options wrong. Yep. Right. Yeah, that's really important. Mm -hmm. um, there, there is something that uh, shows you the percent probability, and I recommend doing seventy percent or better, which usually puts you down here pretty far in the money, and they 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 look more expensive, mm -hmm. but they have a much higher likelihood of actually making it. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Yep. Um, I actually have, this is my E-Trade account. This is NVIDIA. Mm -hmm. Just so happens that the example I use right there is, is it's from last year. Okay. But NVIDIA is right now almost at exactly the same price as it was a year ago. Oh, how funny. <laughs> <laughs> or I think it was November or something late last year. All right. So, so these are pretty, pretty similar. Um, so this is what it looks like. This is the puts. If I wanted to, you know, buy a put thinking that it's going down, I could do it right here at 200. Right now it's at 221. It would cost me $7.85. Right. For that put. Mm -hmm. All right. So key takeaways. In the money and out of the money is a matter of the strike price position relative to the market value of the underlying stock mm -hmm. or its moneyness. Mm -hmm. So in the, I can share these slides with folks if they uh, want to send me a note. I'd be happy to do that. Okay. Send it to that breakpointtrading.com, mm -hmm. uh, breakpointtrading at gmail.com. Mm -hmm. um, out of the money are nearly always less costly, which makes them more desirable, but they're also less likely to actually hit. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. So here's an image that I put together that kind of shows you what the different ways of doing options are. So you have calls and puts. You can be a buyer, which is the way most people typically think about calls and puts, or you can be a seller. So as a buyer, you have the right to buy that stock, but you are not obligated to buy it. As a buyer of puts, so if the stock goes up, you have the right to buy it, but you're not obligated to. Mm -hmm. If it goes down, you have the right to sell it, but you are not obligated to. If you are a seller of these, and this is where it, it's a little bit different. So you don't always have to be a buyer. You can also be a seller of options. You can actually be the market maker mm -hmm. of the option. However, you do have an obligation to deliver the shares. So you're obliged to sell those shares for calls. And if you're a seller of puts, you're obliged to buy them. So if, if it goes below the price that you sold that put for, then you have to actually buy it. Sometimes that's a good thing. And I'll show you why here in a second. This is the time decay. So it's important to understand with options, time decay as well. So options will, will decay over time. And the closer you get to the expiration date, the faster they will decay. Mm -hmm. So remember that premium that I talked about? Mm -hmm. That premium gets cheaper and cheaper the closer you get to expiration. And the reason is it's less and less likely that the stock will actually hit that price mm -hmm. as it gets closer. So as a buyer of calls or puts, time decay, time decay works against you. It will start to decay as you get closer to the end. But as a seller, it actually works for you because you already have received the premium. Remember mm -hmm. that premium I talked about? If you're a seller, you receive that premium right away. Mm -hmm. That's cash in your account. Yep. And as it gets closer to the expiration point, the time decay decays it all the way to zero. And if you still own, if you still have that and the, the price has not gone in the money, then you get to keep the whole premium and you never bought the stock. Nice. All right. Mm -hmm. It's important to understand four market phases. I talked about this in a previous session. So you have to know where we are. Are we in accumulation? Are we in advancing? Are we in distribution? So if we're in advancing, you want to buy, be buying calls. If we're in declining, you want to be buying puts, right? Mm -hmm. But there are ways to make money with options, even if, if, even if we're in these sideways movement areas. Mm -hmm. I'll talk about that in a second. Okay. So what, what are the risks for options for buying and selling? So buying, you get maximum gains. The gains are unlimited if you're buying calls. And the gains on puts are all the way down to zero. The stock goes to zero. If you bought the put, you're, you're betting that it's going down. Risk is limited to only the cost of your premium. So if, if your premium was $100 to buy that option, then that's all you can lose is $100. And if it goes to you know, 1,000, if you bought calls on Tesla when it was selling for $200 mm -hmm. and it went to $1,200, mm -hmm. that's $1,000 for every one of those. You might've only paid $100 for it. Mm -hmm. So that's the most you can lose. That's the most at, at risk. Requires less capital than buying the actual stock. Mm -hmm. And it improves your percent gain on each successful trade. Disadvantages, time decay reduces the value of the option over time. And that's why you shouldn't buy the cheapest ones. You should buy the ones that are in the money, even though they're more expensive, because you have less time decay mm. to worry about. Selling options. Premium income is identified at the time of the trade. So as, as soon as you sell it, you make that premium right away. Mm -hmm. Time decay works in your favor, because as it gets closer and closer to expiration, your premium goes down to your, your, the expiration, the, the value goes to zero and you keep all of the premium. It also gives you the ability to acquire stock at a discount if you're selling puts. Mm. I'll explain that in a second. So it, it's also a way to actually buy the stock rather than just paying for it outright. And the reason is you, you get the strike price less the premium. So you've already made the premium, right? And if it goes below your strike price, then you subtract the premium and your new basis is that new basis for the stock. So you're actually buying the stock for less. And if it's done correctly, selling both puts and calls can generate income, which I'll show you in the next session. 
However, disadvantages, unhedged sellers face theoretically unlimited losses. So you have to keep that in mind. If you're unhedged, and I'll show you how you can hedge to, to prevent this from happening, that's what credit spreads are. But if you're unhedged, theoretically, you could <clears throat> have unlimited losses. So the best practices, you know, you should only sell options when you're comfortable that the stock is going up, sell put options. You should only enter trades where the net price paid for the underlying is attractive. And then you get to keep the entire premium if it expires worthless. So this is a naked put. So this is what I meant by selling a put, in this case, 100 contracts, you sell <clears throat> with a strike price of $75, you collect $2.25, the expiration is 30 days away, that $2.25 goes directly into your account immediately. So 225, if we're doing one option, it's 100 shares, so 100 times 225. So $225 goes right into your account. $7,500 is on hold <clears throat> just in case you have to buy back the stock, right? So if it goes below your strike price, then you are obligated to buy the stock. So you need to have 7,500 in your account. So break even is 7,275. If the stock is above 75, the put expires and you get to keep it all. You keep all of this 225. If the stock goes below 75, then it, then it gets a sign and you then have to buy it for that $75 minus the 225. So your actual basis for that is 72.75. Okay, so you're buying it for less than what you expected. Mm -hmm. And here's the percent gain right here. So that's a naked put. That selling puts can actually generate income. Mm -hmm. um, this is a really good chart that shows you the time decay right here. So when you're buying options, you wanna be on the left-hand side of this. You wanna go as many days out as possible to reduce the time decay as you move towards expiration. Got it. If you're selling options, you wanna be on the right-hand side of this because you want that time decay. In fact, look what happens within seven days. Wow. Seven days, it just drops off a cliff and that's how we're going to generate weekly income. Okay. Here's an example using NVIDIA. This is the actual chart. So, and this is why technical analysis is so important when doing these things. This is a chart of NVIDIA back in October. You can see right here, the eight moving average crossed the 21. I've talked about this before on our sessions. So the eight crossed the 21 right here. Options expiration was back here. So we could sell this option because it looks like it's going up. The RSI is ascending. The accumulation distribution is ascending. So this stock is probably going up. So it's a good candidate to sell a put. So we sell 10 puts at the $200 strike price. So notice 200 is way down here. This is up here around 220 where this cross. We're selling the one at 200. So that gives us a cushion. That means we don't want this stock to drop below 200. If it were to drop below 200, we would have to buy it right. at 200 minus our premium of 785 or 192.15 basically, okay? But we're betting that it's not gonna drop to 200 because of the technical analysis that we've done, okay? Mm -hmm. So we sell that put right there. We put $7,850 in our pocket immediately. And then we just wait. So we're selling the, the November expiration, which is over here, this little blue line right here. Mm -hmm. So that's the expiration date. Now we also need to keep be aware of earnings because we have an earnings date right here, right in the middle of it. So we just hang on to this. And as this goes, as the time starts to decay closer and closer to expiration, our 785 is actually losing value, but we've already made our 7,850. Mm -hmm. So if we were to sell it just before expiration out here, we won't keep the whole 7,850, but we'll keep most of it because we're almost at expiration. So we might keep uh, $7,000 of the 7,850. If we were not comfortable holding through earnings, if they had mm -hmm. terrible earnings and this thing dropped way down to 190, mm -hmm. right? Yep. And we can sell it just before earnings and still keep $7,000 of this. 
Got it. But if we thought it was a strong stock, and it clearly looks like it's a strong stock in through here, we could hang on to it for two more days when when options expire, and we keep the whole 7850 And by the way, when that happens, when that expires and you don't exercise, then you also do not pay any commissions. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Your, your broker just, you know, the, you know, figures out what actually you already have the money in your account. Yeah, it's already so, there. Yeah. Yeah. So nothing happens basically, but you don't pay any commissions either. Yeah, they just now, close, if you do exercise close the a couple of days before, you you will pay commissions on it, but you're still gonna make seven thousand dollars. Correct. But if the stock drops below two hundred, then one hundred shares are automatically bought with a basis now of one ninety two fifteen. Because you already have the seven eighty five premium. Correct. Right. So now you're buying Nvidia, and you might be ha very happy to buy Nvidia at one ninety two fifteen. Now you can you can look at the chart over here, and the the support is right about where that is anyway. Yeah. Right. So you might be more than happy to buy Nvidia at one ninety two. So this is also a way to actually buy stock mm -hmm. as well. Very cool. All right. So that's that's it for. Uh, the, the next session will be on credit spreads. It won't take as long because okay. we needed to have this basic understanding of selling puts mm -hmm. to understand how to do a credit spread and how to protect yourself in a lot of these. Dan, thank you very much for bringing us to our channel. Again, uh, puts and calls, in the money, out of the money, strikes, yeah. time decay, all those things are very valuable. You might have to watch this a couple of times. This is not something I am currently doing. It is something that historically has burdened me because I did it wrong. Uh, but I thought this was an important conversation to have. Look yeah, forward and by to the way, and that's, that's a good point. I, I would also say that it's not something that I typically do either. Mm -hmm. The only way that I would buy a put or a call mm -hmm. is if I was very, very sure that the stock was going up. Okay. Now, in this particular example, NVIDIA had last year at the end of the year had been a very strong stock. So rather than selling the put here and you know making the seven thousand, I might have bought the, the call instead, mm. and then I would have made this all of this all the way up here to three forty. Wow, so that's one hundred and forty dollars I could have made mm -hmm. instead of just seven dollars and eighty five cents. Gotcha. Right. So that probably would have been a, a better play, mm -hmm. um, but in in this particular case, it's a good example of of how selling yeah. puts would work. So I don't do it either unless it's a really, really clear um, and, and it's pretty sure, a pretty sure bet. Okay. With NVIDIA back last year, it would have been a pretty sure bet. Very cool. Well, thank you very but much. I do, for, but I will do credit spreads and we'll talk about that next time. Awesome. I've I never done a credit spread, so I look forward to learning about it. Dan, uh, do you have your uh, email address or your site up? You shut up uh, one yeah. more time. Hang on. Yep. There you go. There there you go, folks, for uh, those listening on the podcast. It is breakpointtrading at gmail.com. Thanks for all you do, bud. You bet. Thank you. Mm -hmm.